We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly, talking Texas Longhorn tennis, and uh, we shift full on to talking Texas women's tennis with head coach Patty Fendick McCain and assistant coach Daria Kleitch, who of course played for Patty when she was ruling the roost in Seattle, Washington, at the University of Washington. I asked you th this last year about how how important and how unique it was to have a former player on your staff, and you you talked about the unique experience, and I wanted to give you a chance to kind of recap that a little bit. When you have someone who played for you and then joins you on staff, because a lot of coaches really like it, and some coaches are kind of like, eh, the relationship changes and that sort of thing, but it, but it's been really good for you, I know. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's been an... Uh... Uh, many years now. Um, I think it's very unusual for uh, somebody to stay uh, together for so long as as head coach and assistant coach. You know, we're very lucky. She turned down turns down head coaching jobs every year because um, she's she's on a mission here. So, you know, I've been very very fortunate. Um, and in her case, making the transition from being a player to being a coach was was relatively easy because uh, she was coaching as a student athlete because of an injury that she had. So she was spending a lot of time coaching. Uh, during that period, so like I said, it was an easy transition for her, and and uh, we're we're very different personalities. So I think that we we work for really well together in that respect. Daria, I, I, most coaches who were athletes, when I ask them if you're in your prime, we rather play or coach, they're always the competitor in them, always rises up and said, "Oh gosh, I was a player, always like player." But the fact that you had that unique road, and while injured, started basically coaching. It almost seems like the two have kind of blended together for you. It really did, and it happened in a very natural way for me. I never really thought that coaching would be something I would do as a career uh, while, I, while I was playing. And so um, the position that I was in was basically my teammates asked me questions about what do you think I did and what do you think I should improve on? And um, I guess what I told them at the time worked, and so they kept asking, and I kept doing it. And uh, um, but to answer your questions, whether I would rather play or coach, um, I like playing. Yeah. I like competition, <laughs> yes. And it's nice to be able to contribute and to help them grow and help them see um, improve um, with the knowledge um, that I. That I share with them. You know, uh, Patty, you mentioned when I asked you for the uh, memories of, of Pennock Allison, you talked about uh, winning there and, and, and talking about being there. I mean, the, the, the thoughts and memories of playing, uh, because that, that, that competitor is always in us as an athlete before you transition into coaching. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that's one of our biggest assets, both, you know, as coaches, both of us as coaches, is um, to have played at that level. Um, you know, in Daria's case, the highest Division One level, and, and also international level, and myself on the tour, um, it gives you a different sense for what players can and can't do, and what yeah, different routes that you might take them in terms of uh, their own development. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 all been a great experience, and as far as like playing at Pennock um, as a player, I mean that was a life changing event for me. Um, gave me the confidence to go on and really achieve some some pretty great things as a player. Daria, as, as a, a native of Croatia, you are so comfortable with recruiting Europe and being around that. I mean, is it, is, is it as comfortable to you now, all the years you've spent here in the United States, as, as opposed to when you were growing up there? When you go back, does it, is it still just slide on like a comfortable pair of shoes to go back in there and actively seek out and recruit uh, future student athletes for Texas? Absolutely. Um, I go to the same events uh, to recruit that I played at, so um, a lot of European championships and some uh, um, $10,000 tournaments and 25s, and so um, and national championships in different countries. Um, so yeah, that comes easy. Um, recruiting in the U.S. has um, been very successful, and so uh, the mentality of kids is a little bit different because I think. With the path that I went through, uh, coming from your home, co home country and, and moving to the U.S. is uh, a little bit different transition. Um, so you come uh, out recruiting from a different perspective. Uh, but as far as the comfort level goes, um, I'm just as comfortable recruiting in the U.S. and going to all the tournaments here. It's interesting you bring that up. You, it's almost like I heard you say recruiting or maybe more correctly student athletes have changed a little bit. So from the time even when you played, say a decade ago, has it, has it really changed significantly? 
Yeah, I would, I would say so. Um, European players, um, and, and actually from all around the world, um, have a little bit different attitude towards um, tennis as they're growing up and um, most of them want to be professional tennis players. So college tennis is um, just a part of their developmental path into professional tennis. Um, in the US, we find a lot of kids whose ultimate goal is to get a scholarship and n maybe not pursue it further, which is okay. Um, but going into it, you have to know what their setup is and how they grew up and what their aspirations are. So are, are the personalities that much different because of what those goals are, the U.S. kids being more scholarship oriented and the Europeans being more down the road professionally oriented? Um, I, would, I would say yes. Uh, the, the, the path they have ingrained in their um, past and their future is different and so the goals are different, uh, the expectations are different. Um, you now whereas the ultimate goal for a professional player in the future is um, they try to learn from professional players, whereas college players might be satisfied with learning from the college, collegiate level, which is still pretty high, but you know, the really great stuff happens in the Grand Slams. Yeah, right, and, and yet your job and Patty's job is to let all the kids know here that that, that ultimate goal is to win a national championship here, right? Absolutely, right. <laughs> right. absolutely. And, and just by virtue of that, um, it's a very, very high goal. Sure. So if you're just aiming to get a scholarship, you know, that probably not won't the place for you. mesh. <laughs> <laughs>